SpaceX is nearing the end of pre-launch testing for Starship Flight 10, bringing the vehicle one step closer to liftoff, and a recent FAA advisory hint at a launch window later this month. Let's rewind and catch up on the latest developments. After completing engine installation, system checks, and integration of all hydraulic, electrical, and other subsystems, Ship 36 was rolled out to the Massey's test site on Sunday noon for its static fire test. From rollout images, it's clear SpaceX is steadily refining Starship's thermal protection system. Ship 36 features three distinct tile sizes. Small tiles along welds seems to conform to complex contours and minimize edge lifting. Medium tiles in the aft section likely to absorb higher thermal and vibrational loads, and standard large tiles covering the rest of the vehicle, including the flaps. Beneath them, a revised wool fiber insulation layer leaves excess material exposed through the gaps, which acts as a built-in filler, improving thermal sealing and gap coverage. Together, these upgrades target Starship's most critical requirement, a safe, controlled re-entry. Further tile refinements are expected in future flights. On Monday afternoon, Ship 36 performed a six-second static fire using one of its sea-level engines, drawing propellants from its header tanks. This test was designed to simulate an in-space engine ignition, specifically mimicking the deorbit burn that Starship will eventually perform to return to Earth after orbital missions. During past suborbital missions, SpaceX has performed similar short-duration engine burns while the vehicle was coasting in space. A similar in-space burn was likely planned for Flight 10 as well, serving to demonstrate Starship's ability to reignite and steer using propellants from the smaller header tanks, which are reserved for landing and precise in-space maneuvers. At the time of making this video, Ship 36 is being prepared for a full-duration, six-engine static fire test at Massey's, the final pre-launch test, which is expected to occur soon. This test will serve as a practical check of several corrective actions taken after the last three flight failures. SpaceX aims to replicate the conditions that led to the propellant leak in Flight 9 to confirm that the redesigned seals and structures perform as intended. The test will also evaluate changes to the engine systems and propellant feed lines which were key failure points in Flights 7 and 8. A successful six-engine static fire will confirm that Ship 36 is fully ready for Flight 10. Meanwhile, Ship 36's flight partner, Booster 16, has completed its full-duration static fire test and is now undergoing final system verifications at the production site, including electrical, hydraulic, and pneumatic system checks crucial for a successful mission. The hot staging adapter was recently moved into Mega Bay, suggesting that installation onto Booster 16 may have already taken place. Moreover, on Wednesday morning, teams from the flight termination system crew were spotted entering Mega Bay, likely to begin installation of the FTS charges on Booster 16. Their installation typically occurs late in the launch preparation flow, meaning Booster 16 is now in the final stages of pre-flight integration. The booster will soon be ready for rollout to the launch site. Once Booster 16 is in place, Ship 36 will follow, leading to the full vehicle stacking on the launch mount. That will set the stage for the highly anticipated Flight 10 liftoff, a mission widely seen as SpaceX's attempt to correct issues from the past three flights and finally achieve a fully successful flight test of the Block 2 Starship. Flight 10 has now appeared on the FAA's Operations Plan Advisory document, with a tentative launch window opening as early as June 29th. This listing represents an early formal indication that SpaceX has communicated its launch intent and targeted timeline to the FAA. While this FAA schedule is an early signal, we should expect additional regulatory confirmations in the coming days. Although no official mission profile has been released, Flight 10 is expected to closely follow Flight 9's plan, beginning with liftoff, followed by stage separation, second engine cutoff, and then the deployment of Starlink payload simulators and a relight of one of the ship's sea level engines in space. Two crucial mission goals that were failed to execute last time. The mission is expected to end with Ship 36's controlled re entry, testing heat tile durability before splashdown in the Indian Ocean. On the booster side, the flight profile has been confirmed to be different from the previous mission. SpaceX's director of Starship Engineering, Shana Diaz, confirmed that Booster 16 will attempt a catch using the launch tower's chopstick arms, instead of splashing down in the ocean like Flight 9. Meanwhile, ground crews are actively repairing launch pad damage from Flight 9, particularly the booster quick disconnect system, which suffered structural damage to its hood and door. Damaged sections are being cut and replaced, and repairs are on track to restore full pad functionality. If everything stays on schedule, including vehicle readiness and FAA license approval, Flight 10 could launch as early as late June. 
the FAA has officially closed its mishap investigation into Starship's Flight 8, confirming that SpaceX's root cause analysis and all eight corrective actions were accepted. The FAA report aligns with what SpaceX had already disclosed before Flight 9. The failure in Flight 8 was traced to a hardware issue in one of the Raptor engines, which caused unintended propellant mixing and ignition, ultimately leading to the loss of the vehicle. Previously unseen footage from Flight 8 has recently leaked online, revealing the violent final moments of Ship 34 with stunning clarity. The first two frames, recorded from inside the engine bay, show a chaotic scene where several engines are visibly missing, likely blown out by an internal explosion. The plume distortion and the asymmetric glow hint at a catastrophic overpressure or hardware failure just milliseconds earlier. The next two frames, captured by an external aft-facing camera, depict debris violently ejecting from the base of the vehicle, including what appears to be engine hardware and thermal insulation panels. These visuals confirm that the explosion originated in the engine section and caused significant structural damage before telemetry was lost. For the first time, we can clearly trace the chain of events, from internal disruption to external fragmentation, offering rare insight into what may have triggered Ship 34's failure during descent. In contrast, Flight 9's Raptors performed nominally, shutting down as planned during ascent. That strongly suggests the corrective actions worked as intended. However, Flight 9's failure stemmed from a completely unrelated issue during the coast phase. A propellant leak from Ship 35's main tanks led to a loss of attitude control, which prevented the vehicle from orienting itself correctly for re-entry. That incident has now highlighted the need for additional design changes to prevent such leaks during orbital coast phases. Interestingly, Flight 9 also recorded a thermal hotspot in one of the Raptor vacuum engines, similar to what was observed in Flight 8, just before the engine bay explosion. But in this case, the overheating occurred late in the ascent, likely too late to escalate into a full-blown failure. Had it happened earlier, Flight 9 might have suffered the same fate as Flight 8. That said, it's safe to assume that SpaceX engineers have already reviewed this event closely, and any underlying issues with engine insulation, heat shielding, or combustion stability have been addressed. As we head toward Flight 10, all eyes will be on Ship 36's performance, especially for any signs of thermal stress or fluid system leaks. If those risks are mitigated, we may finally see a clean Starship Block 2 upper stage flight. And if you're looking for a detailed breakdown of Starship Flight 7 through 9, covering each anomaly, root cause, and SpaceX's corrective actions, you can check out my full analysis videos linked in the description. Construction of SpaceX's new Gigabay integration facility at Starbase has reached a key milestone with the completion of sheet pile installation. These interlocked steel walls form a soil-retaining perimeter, stabilizing the site for deep foundation work. With the boundary secured, crews have begun laying geotextile membranes, engineered plastic sheets, over the leveled soil, followed by compacted gravel. The geotextile acts as a filtration layer allowing water drainage while preventing fine soil from contaminating the gravel, preserving its structural integrity. The gravel layer distributes loads evenly and provides a stable, well-drained base for upcoming foundation work. Next steps likely include installing formwork and rebar for a large raft foundation or pile caps, followed by concrete parring to create the base slab. Once set, vertical steel columns, beams, and walls will rise, following the construction sequence used for the high bay and mega bay. Gigabay is designed to be a high-throughput Starship manufacturing hub, potentially producing over 1,000 vehicles annually. It will consolidate advanced tooling, automated welding, and supply chain systems to enable rapid, large-scale Starship assembly. For more details on the facility's design and goals, check out my earlier video linked in the description. At Cape Canaveral, SpaceX has officially begun converting Space Launch Complex 37 into a Starship launch site. Originally built in the early 1960s for uncrewed Apollo missions, SLC-37 was later modified for Delta IV launches by United Launch Alliance, which operated there from 2002 until the rocket's retirement in April last year. After ULA stood down, NASA and the Space Force reassigned the site to SpaceX, aiming to maximize federal launch infrastructure and support both national security and commercial missions. Two weeks ago, the U.S. Air Force released a draft environmental impact statement outlining the redevelopment plan. The EIS process, launched in early 2024, assessed environmental impacts across multiple categories, most of which were deemed manageable with mitigation. Following the draft EIS release, SpaceX was granted limited access to SLC-37 to begin preparatory work. A major milestone came with the controlled demolition of ULS Delta IV Mobile Service Tower, Umbilical Tower, 
and lightning towers, marking the official start of redevelopment. In the coming weeks, SpaceX will clear remaining Delta IV hardware and start groundwork for new infrastructure. Plans include two Starship launch pads, each with towers, mounts, and flame deflector systems modeled after Starbase's Pad B. Additional facilities will support propellant production and storage, water and liquid nitrogen tanks, utility systems, and other launch support equipment. SpaceX projects up to 76 Starship launches per year from SLC-37, potentially resulting in 152 landings annually, one for each booster and upper stage, plus static fire tests. Construction is expected to begin later this year, with the first launch from the site targeted for 2026. Meanwhile, over at Launch Complex 39A, construction of the Starship launch pad is moving ahead rapidly. Crews have started pouring reinforced concrete into the flame trench, which has been excavated adjacent to the existing launch tower. Meanwhile, work continues on the fully stacked launch tower, with arm actuation tests and water bag load tests expected soon to validate structural integrity and operational readiness. Nearby at Roberts Road, SpaceX is assembling the launch mount, integrating pad hardware such as quick disconnect arms and flame diverters, and fabricating ground support equipment. In parallel, a new Gigabase-style production facility, similar to the one now rising at Starbase, is also planned for Roberts Road. This site will eventually support on-site fabrication and integration of Starships and Super Heavy Boosters for launches from both LC-39A and SLC-37. However, for initial flights from these pads, SpaceX will ship fully assembled Starships and Super Heavy Boosters from Starbase. Altogether, SpaceX is developing five Starship launch pads across Starbase, Kennedy Space Center, and Cape Canaveral, each in varying stages of readiness. And that number will likely grow, as Elon Musk pushes toward the long-term goal of launching multiple Starships daily. Now, let's discuss the latest updates from the world of science and technology. The Solar Orbiter spacecraft, a mission led by the European Space Agency with significant contributions from NASA, has achieved a historic milestone by capturing the world's first detailed images of the Sun's poles, particularly the elusive Southern Pole. Launched in February 2020, Solar Orbiter was designed specifically to study the Sun's heliosphere, solar wind, and, crucially, the polar regions, which previous missions couldn't access due to orbital constraints. The spacecraft has been actively observing the Sun since November 2021 and has delivered several breakthroughs. It captured the closest ever images of the Sun, revealing small-scale flares called campfires, likely major contributors to heating the corona, the Sun's outer atmosphere, which is hotter than its surface. The spacecraft also helped unravel the origin of solar switchbacks, sudden, sharp reversals in the magnetic field of the solar wind. It found these occur when magnetic loops in the corona reconnect, creating whip-like energy bursts that form S-shaped distortions in the magnetic field. These kinks increase turbulence in the solar wind, potentially amplifying space weather effects on Earth's satellites and power systems. Beyond these discoveries, the Sun's poles remain a central focus of the mission as they are key to understanding the Sun's 11-year magnetic reversal cycle, which aligns with solar maximum, a period of heightened activity currently underway. These polarity flips drive phenomena like sunspots, flares, and coronal mass ejections, which can disrupt communications and power systems on Earth. The poles are thought to be regions where magnetic field lines emerge and sink back, playing a central role in the solar cycle. Until now, no spacecraft had imaged the poles due to orbital limitations, with most missions confined within 7 degrees of the solar equator. Solar Orbiter overcame this by using gravity assist from Venus and Earth to gradually increase its orbital tilt, reaching 17 degrees by March 2025. This enabled it to fly just 32 million miles above the Sun's south pole and capture unprecedented images of turbulent plasma flows and complex magnetic structures. For the first time, instruments detected both north and south magnetic polarities coexisting at the Sun's south pole, a configuration previously theorized but never observed. This mixed polarity state occurs briefly during each solar cycle, typically lasting several months to about a year, as the global magnetic field undergoes reversal. After the flip, a dominant polarity gradually re-establishes itself at each pole. Apart from the magnetic reversal discovery, Solar Orbiter also measured, for the first time, the speed of solar material, specifically clumps of carbon ions, moving within a layer of the Sun. This breakthrough is vital to understanding how the solar wind forms and accelerates, a core mission objective. These findings from the spacecraft's initial polar campaign, while groundbreaking, are just the beginning. The complete dataset from Solar Orbiter's first full pole-to-pole -pole orbit, covering all 10 instruments, is expected by October.
Future Venus flybys will continue raising the spacecraft's tilt, targeting up to 33 degrees in the extended mission phase for even clearer polar views. By mapping the Sun's magnetic structure and tracking its evolution, Solar Orbiter is advancing space weather prediction, helping protect satellites, astronauts, and Earth's infrastructure from solar disruptions. Thank you for tuning in for the latest science news and Starship updates. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, leave a comment, and share it with your friends. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you never miss an episode.